Hi, my name is Teddy Wu, and today I'm here to talk about the history of Japanese American food and teach you how to make some manju. Manju is a wheat based bun typically baked and filled with a sweet bean paste. Today, we're going to be making shiro an, or white bean manju, using a lima bean filling. I will be combining two separate recipes, one for kuri manju and the other for lima bean an by Sumi Shikami. These were found in Oriori, a 1972 compilation cookbook of Japanese American recipes from the Christ Church of Chicago. Let's start with the lima bean paste. We're going to need lima beans, sugar, and salt. These lima beans have been rinsed and soaked overnight, and we should be able to peel the skins right off by hand. Once we've got all the skins off, we'll put them into a pot with some new water and bring them up to a simmer for around an hour or two. As it simmers, try to skim off any foam that comes to the surface of the water in order to keep the color of the paste as white as possible. We'll know it's done when we can take a bean and mash it with our fingers. Lima bean manju is very symbolic of Japanese American cooking and its blending of two different cultures. Arriving from China in the 1300s, manju is one of Japan's oldest wagashi, or traditional sweets, and they've been enjoyed at tea ceremonies and festivals for centuries. In the early 20th century, manju made its way to Japan towns across America's west coast, where they were sold commercially at sweet shops like Fugetsudo in Los Angeles and Ben Kyodo in San Francisco. In the 1950s, American scientists had taken lima beans from Peru and engineered new crops to grow quickly. They hit the shelves of post-war grocery stores and soon became a household staple for their shelf stability. Japanese Americans found them to be an easy substitute for the native Japanese white beans, and today, lima beans have become the worldwide standard for use in shiroan. Now that the beans are cooked, let's drain the liquid and move the beans to a food processor. Let it run for a minute or two until the beans are the size of sand grains. Then, we'll transfer a little bit at a time into a fine mesh strainer. Take a wooden spatula and press the beans through the strainer, and we'll see that a really nice smooth paste forms on the other side. We'll do this until all the beans are pushed through. Now that we have our paste, let's sweeten it up. Put the paste back into the pot and add salt and half of the sugar. Once the sugar is dissolved, give it a taste and add more if you'd like. Once we're happy with the sugar level, let it simmer for about 30 minutes. We'll know it's done once we can draw a line in the pan like this. Transfer it to a container and let it cool. All right, we're ready to make the manju dough. For this, we're gonna need butter, sugar, eggs, evaporated milk, vanilla extract, baking soda, and all-purpose flour. Cream the butter and sugar together with a mixer. Then we'll add one of our eggs, evaporated milk, and vanilla extract, mixing well after we add each one. In a separate bowl, let's sift and combine our flour and baking soda, then fold it into our wet batter in parts, making sure we don't overmix the dough until it no longer sticks to the bowl. Wrap it in plastic and place it in the fridge to chill for an hour. Before World War II, Japanese American cooking was largely confined to the household. That changed when Japanese American families were forcibly removed from their homes under Executive Order 9066 and sent to incarceration camps. The food at camp was cooked in assembly lines, served at mess halls, and could hardly be considered Japanese or American food. As the war in the camps came to an end, the War Relocation Authority used the opportunity for resettlement to intentionally separate Japanese American communities and disperse pre-war Japan towns that existed on the West Coast. In addition, Japanese Americans were relocated under the pretense that they must renounce their native language and culture and assimilate into American society. Despite these tensions, Japanese Americans continued to build their own community networks through churches, mutual aid organizations, and neighborhood hangouts. The food they cooked became a central web that held together many of these networks, which hosted picnics and potlucks, cooked meals to those in need, and invented their own hybrid Japanese American recipes to sell. In this way, post-war Japanese American cooking shifted from being down to the home to being shared with the communities that they built. 
Many of these new recipes found their way into Japanese American cookbooks, often compiled by local church groups and largely sold to sansei who sought to reclaim the foods they grew up with. Scholar Valerie Matsumoto says that perhaps no other ethnic minority has produced more compilation cookbooks than Japanese Americans. These recipes continue to be shared today at cooking classes hosted by JASC. Now we're all ready to make the manju. First, we'll preheat our oven to 350, then we'll take the dough and split it into 12 roughly equal pieces. Take one and flatten it into a palm-sized circle, making sure the edges are thinner than the center. Take a ball of shiro on and place it in the center of the dough, then fold and pinch up the sides around it. Once we have 12 of them, we'll separate and beat the whites of one egg into a separate bowl and brush each bun with the mixture. Now we'll throw them into the oven for around 20 minutes. Once they're golden brown, let's take them out and let them cool. Cooking stuff like this is a really important way of continuing the sort of resistance to what Japanese American food has endured over time and over history. It's really important to be able to continue to learn about this, to, to be able to have, to have access to cook the, these kinds of foods and to understand that, you know, these foods don't just exist in a vacuum and aren't just cooked for sustenance or for enjoyment. It, they, they really serve a much larger purpose of, of keeping a community together and holding on to a culture that was destined to be lost if not for some folks who really wanted to keep it alive. <laughs>